and under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Good morning. Good morning. First item on our agenda is the first reading of the Ewalt Easel. Ewalt Riesel. Right here. I'll make motion to e proof. I'll second it. Motion by Sutton, second by Hassan to it. This is just first reading. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That was just first reading, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I actually want to just take care of a couple things we have about. Okay, uh, claims. I had written payroll down, but I don't think payroll's in this. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is. Okay, I claims and payroll. Move. Second. Move by Sutton, second by Fishback to approve the claims and payroll. Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Oh, minutes June 5th general and June 7th canvas meeting. Move. Second. Moved by Kipley, second by Hansen to approve the general meetings of June 5th and the June 7th election canvas. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the HR report. Move it. Second. Moved by Fishback, second by Sutton to approve the HR report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, there's a pay request number one for the landfill cell tree construction. I didn't see that. How much was that? 340, I can't remember. 300 something. I guess I missed that. Yeah. Yeah, within there. I'll move it. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Hanson to pay request number one for landfill cell number three construction. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, fair contracts. Uh, show clicks and for the rental of the golf cars. Well, second. Moved by Kipley, second by Sutton to approve the fair contracts. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion Max, carries. That's not one of the contracts that you just dropped off, is it? No. Okay. I haven't no. looked at it yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's an agreement with uh, at, between Aberdeen School District and JDC for the teachers in the center. Move. Second. Moved by Hanson, second by Kipley to approve the JDC agreement with the Aberdeen School District. Reading through there, there wasn't any changes from last year, was there? Did anybody notice? No, I okay. no. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I'm going to leave this one. I need to ask Dirk. Okay. There was a fireworks permit for Richmond Lake Association. Um, the applicant had failed to sign it, and I didn't realize that when it came before you last week. So. And we actually signed. pushed it off a week. One question about the, the possible burn ban. So yeah. Chris, you good. had some information on it for us that? Yep, I found the, the information from last year and there's nothing the, the county can do with the permit. Now they're, they're required to apply for a permit. I think Rachel mentioned it last week and she's correct that you, you can't stop it unless the, the, it's an extreme category for the National Weather Service burn ban. I, I'd move approval of it. I'll second it. Moved by Kepley, second by Sutton, uh, to approve the firework permit for Richmond Lake Association. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There was a letter in the packet for surplus property. Uh, it was a piece of equipment that to be surplused at the landfill. I can't remember if it was a scanner or... Well, not the shredder. No, the shredder. The shredder. From, from the veteran. From the veteran. Right? Right. Yeah. I'll move it. Second. Moved by Hanson, second by Kipley to authorize a surplus property to the landfill, uh, which was a shredder from yep. veterans. It's currently be it was being used in veterans before okay. it stopped working. <coughs> oh, but I think we already have oh, Hanson no. and Kipley. Just need a vote. Sorry, yeah. too much. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> the auditors opposed. Oh. Motion carries. <laughs> okay, let's go. Auditors <laughs> report of account. Move. Second. Moved by Hanson, second by Fishback to approve the auditor's report of account. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then we're going for our next okay. item. Next on our agenda is Julie Pfeiffer with Worthmore Director to discuss our 2019 budget. 
Morning, Julie. Morning, everybody. Jan, former commissioner. Tom, you're in my seat. Some days you could have it, yeah. probably. No kidding. Tom, no kidding. Tom, she's in Carl's seat. <laughs> 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 you had to remember that. <laughs> Your favorite today. Uh, oh, good. I just said there. I yeah. missed you a pin. <laughs> <laughs> So good morning, thank you for letting me come to see you and first off, thank you for your contribution, you're always good to me. So, um, this basically shows you our request is the same as it was, has been for years, 25,000. <coughs> and the numbers that you'll see from last year to this current year, um, some have gone down, some have come up drastic. There's, a, there's no shortage of people needing our services. So I think Mr. White can test to that. I think you're in job security there, don't you? Okay. Till the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> you can share those. Okay. I see your biggest uh, jump was the adult continuing care. What is that detail that's so much greater than the rest? It's aftercare and for people who go might go to a treatment someplace else and they come back, they get aftercare with us for our aftercare is open for a lifetime at no charge for them. Okay. Because it's the one thing that if they can have a little extra something every week for an hour, it helps them continue doing what they should be doing. Comparing DUI court to drug court, look at the difference in yeah. increase of numbers. Yep. And they, um, <coughs> they're in there, you know, as you guys well know, for a lengthy period of time. And some of them have been extremely successful. I know one of the things the state would like to see is more for expanded drug courts. You know, right now we can only take so many people when it's full people have to wait, which is not a good scenario either. And of course, we're no different than any place else. We see a huge increase. You know, last year we talked about opiates. We still see that, but we see a huge increase in methamphetamine. Really? You know, for a long time we had it, when it first started, really bad and it was meth labs and then mm -hmm. it went down, <coughs> plateaued, and now it's coming back up on the think there's local meth labs are just being brought in? I don't think there's as many labs as there is stuff no, coming in from Mexico like and California. Ninety five percent comes from Mexico. Yeah. Wow. Build the wall. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And I guess that would have been, yeah. <laughs> that been a better sell is build the wall to keep the drugs out. Yeah. 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 Exactly would have been. I would entertain a motion to approve the twenty-five thousand dollars. Well, we're not. That's part of our budget. Okay, well, request. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you have any other questions for me? Our no. name, our name did change. Uh, the Avera system changed our name to. It shouldn't say worth more on there right. anymore. Right. Yeah. Sorry about that. That was our. Well, it does on our my letterhead too. Yeah. We're using up our letterhead, but it is the oh, okay. But down here, down here it's yep. now it's what? Avera Addiction Care Center. So when McKinnon builds theirs, it'll be the same, whether you're in, in Sioux Falls, Aberdeen, or Marshall. So that was a little difficult to let go of. Yep. But services are still the same. Okay. Yep, end of the year. So next really? year you get somebody. Really? So now I'm just going to come in and sit. And Harass now they that. repeat that. That's 202 <laughs> days from yeah. today. That makes sense. I have a down, but work days is left. Oh, yeah. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's on my day. Every work day as a commissioner, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. true. Well, we thank you for what yep. you do yeah. Yeah. for our society. Thank you, Kimberly. All right, thank you come Julie. back to this Thank thing. you, Julie. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be as fun without Carl. <laughs>
Until you show up, Tom. Yeah, that's right. Probably not. Probably not. Keep going. I guess I'll put Take care. Thank yep. You do. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank
and I would just like to hire a, a deputy rather than a chief at this point and kind of you know let us all settle in with without Carol being here that's going to change the dynamics a bit um, you know because we lean on her a lot and so just kind of see where things settle out and then go from there. Do you foresee that you will name a chief deputy by the end of the year? I'm, I'm thinking budget. Budget wise. Yeah. Well that's what I put into to my budget numbers was a chief for 19. Mm -hmm. I guess I would go ahead and authorize hiring of a fifth the deputy with the understanding by the end of the year that you'll make the decision. Yeah. Okay. So I'd second that. And I'll verify with the union, but yeah, like like Roberta said, to me it didn't even come into play because they're not that's not a union position. It, I'm so not union currently. So so she's going to get to the board. She's going to want to come in and bother. I know. I know. I know. We have a motion by Kimberly, a second by Hanson to, at this time, hire just a deputy for the current year and determining the fact that we'll have a chief deputy year end or first of 2019 or whatever. Okay, that would be awesome. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Very good. And Gary, can, will you go ahead and post yep, that we'll for get me that, then? We'll get that out after the meeting today. Awesome. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Have a Bye -bye. good day, Carol. we got just a couple more minutes. Uh, do you want to go through a few more things, Max? Oh, I'm sorry. I crossed the line. We'll go back into that. What now? I was ahead of myself. At 9 o'clock, we, we have a, a point. Uh, point. <laughs> oh, so okay. So we'll just back off out here. Is we good? Okay. Morning. Morning. Morning, Gene. Morning. 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 What brings you in? <laughs> Where's your suit? <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to wear that once more. <laughs> well, somebody else can tie the tie then. <laughs> we have on our agenda appointment of the Equalization Director. Well, I hope, I'm, since I'm the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say you're feeling very comfortable right I'm now. At the moment, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate all you've done in the last six months that working through this. Uh, you've done a very good job working with the people and we've been impressed. I've been impressed with what you've been able to handle. So, Thank you. I would make a motion that we appoint Jean Letsky as the new Brown County Director of Equalization. I second that. We have a motion by Sutton, a second by Anson to approve Jean Lesky as our new Equalization Director for Brown County. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Welcome, Jean. <laughs> My one really serious concern, though, is can you make strawberry pie? I cannot. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have to come up with something Fine, else. But no, up. can't do the strawberry pie. What can you pie. make? <laughs> How about I can, I can make a lot of trouble if any of <laughs> <laughs> you. You all say, oh, can't keep us out of trouble. So I appreciate yeah. that. That's right. Uh, with and that, if we could authorize a uh, appraiser <coughs> position right away, too, that'd be great. Yeah. Our office has been short for a well, long time. A person since first year and and coming into to new reappraisal and new new con new construction time of the year and and um, just even if for data entry we could have sure used the extra person for the past six months to get through through the boards we got through um, and appreciate the, you know asking for a an appraiser to fill that position. Mm -hmm. I'd make that motion. Well, it could just say that we need. Do you want to advertise it? Do we need to advertise it? Yeah, we do. So, okay. Do you want to separate it from his appointment? I think it should. Okay. I think separate. it should be a separate one. Second. We have a motion by Hanson, a second from Fishback to mm -hmm. advertise for an appraiser. Do you get Mike's Audi show? Um, <laughs> same as no, we're not. Same as Mike Holmes was. Okay. 
for 21 Tuesday, way effective date is the end of January. Next period. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Yeah. We got I hope you're happy. <laughs> Most of the time we am. Welcome aboard. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Gene. Yeah. Thanks, Gene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 9.05. Discuss poll workers' wages. Max asked to give him a $50 raise. $40. $40. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Warner, when I voted, they were pretty upset about things were going. And I told them we are going to give them a raise. And they said, first they said they weren't coming back again. And I said, we're going to give you a raise next week. And they said they'd be back. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a motion? Huh? I guess. Oh boy. Yeah. I would move it. Oh boy. Second. <laughs> move by Kepley, second by Fishbacks to increase the full workers' wages by $40. Yeah, it's 210 is what you approved at. They the deserve it. January meeting, and then this would raise it to 250 for the. Okay. And I just want to note that Max is a lot more calm this week when she's asking than last week. A <laughs> 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 little hyper. The, the RPM. She's trying to keep, find a way to keep her from going over hold. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion carries. 910. We're, we're two minutes early. Can you handle that, Dirk? We're a little early. Um, I have to make a comment because I looked at the agenda and I go, I'm the sixth, sixth topic at 910. There's no flipping way that this is going to happen at 910. So, well, uh, here it is. 908. Your uh, daughter made the paper today, huh? Yep, yep. It wasn't in the court news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Student of the month. Was that it? Yep. Student of the month. Yep. Yeah, what is she? Uh, she uh, she'll she'll be a junior. Yep. She'll be a junior. She'll be a junior. Yep, that's my last one. So, Derek, did you get a packet from Clark Engineering on the Brown County 23 Cold you Melon Project? Project? Yes. Did you I sign got, those? Got bundle, don't they? Um, yeah, I would have signed the notice to proceed and sent them to, to, to okay. or typically, whatever the first thing is. There's one that we signed. Typically, the commission does that. Oh, okay. Which one's a boy so I will get a motion authorizing you to sign the notice of award. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. And then it's up to you to the contract and the notice to proceed. Okay. I can sign the contract and the notice to proceed, or do they have to if do all It's included in if, if that's the desire. Oh, okay. But for now, I'll get a motion to authorize you to, since you've already done it, the right. notice of award. Okay. And then, do you want to take care of the other two, or should we just be? It's up to you guys. I don't, I don't mind doing it, but the one comment I'll make for consistency's sake is, like when we get those our annual contracts we bring them in the commission approves those up. you know I recommend them or whatever but you guys actually approve them so for the sake of consistency we can have you approve okay approve them all so the other ones yes. okay so this will just be the one for that one yep. yeah and I'll need a copy of it eventually yep yeah okay uh, the two things that I had up here at 910 um, <laughs> which I can't even see it one of them must be Put asking your glasses up. well like they don't work that there's Midday like, for intersection project. Thank you, uh, Maxine. I see you've already got it on the calendar. I think they. Yes. She must have contacted you, but I'd I'd like a motion to advertise for it's the intersection project that's uh, associated with AGP. It's the intersection at Eighth Avenue, uh, 14 and Prairiewood, and Prairiewood and 281, and that's just going to be the next thing. Uh, hopefully, that we get bid and get going up there. So. And that's a turn lane in each one of those yep. intersections. Yep, an extra lane. And I believe at 8th Avenue there's a couple extra lanes <laughs> to, to accommodate that. So The turn lane is from 14 coming south and then taking the 8th Avenue. Where on that intersection are the turn lanes? On, uh, on 13 and 14, right in front of the golf course, there will be a s one for southbound traffic. Turning off of Prairiewood Highway going south? Yeah, correct. And, and then at 8th Avenue and 14? Yep. That will have uh, another lane added in each direction, north and south, and another lane. 
Well, not really. Not, you know, it's already four lanes with a turn lane. Mm -hmm. um, or excuse me, it's three lanes and a turn lane. It'll I. Be, yeah, yeah, on eight, turn it on to yeah. 14. Um, the, that'll be kind of reshaped a little bit, so the right turn lane has a larger radius for a truck to, you know, pulling a pup to, to make the corner and some things like that. But north-south north, north south right now, there's only one lane in each direction. There will eventually be one lane in each direction and then uh, a turn lane in the middle. For both that. north and south? North and south, okay. yeah. So Prairie Wood and 281, you're going to make it so it can go, because there's been quite a bit of construction out there. Yeah, Prairie Wood and 281 is for northbound. That's the turn off of Prairie Wood and go northbound. Because if you go south, you have to go out through the diverging diamond that they have out there now. But that's turn a crazy left. thing to yeah, I'm. And that's another one of those, you know. Yeah, like our one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, will you utilize that that turning lane that you already have on Eighth Avenue, no. turning south? The only that was kind of a temporary deal. For it the never. Plate. I yeah. It never. never it really was used, used one time to bring the mold in, and they never used it after that. Oh, okay. I now the one. So for for that first application, it's kind of like, well, what the hell do we do that for? Yeah. However. All that material is being integrated into this project, so we, yeah, we yeah, didn't we yeah. didn't lose anything by hauling it over there, which so it, because it'll be used and all. Sure. But at the time, we I guess we were improving this intersection three years Thomas. too early. Sure. You brought up roundabouts. How can, I I know 771 is a roundabout, and that caught a lot of static when they put it in. Right. But the truckers love it. Yeah. That's so why aren't we putting in a roundabout? Um. Go to the STIP meeting and listen to the folks in Sisseton <laughs> talk about the roundabouts <laughs> in, that they're trying to put in Sisseton. And it's basically um, almost any time... Always done it that way. Well, you always get that reaction. Everybody loses their mind right off the bat because it's such an odd thing for us. Mm -hmm. It's so much different. And and once once they're accepted and you watch the crash numbers and the type oh, of yeah. accidents that happen, and it, it's just, it's really positive. For us, if we turn around stuff, you know, we're going to make it a, uh, we're going to flip the intersection around here when we get done paving Prairie Wood next year at 10 and, and Prairie Wood, that'll get flipped around. But um, that would would have been, I don't want to go down that route now, yeah. but if we were going a different route, that might have been a possible location to, to put a roundabout. Um, they they work, but like I said, boy, you go you go and listen to the folks at Cisco, and they want no part of it. Yeah, I know. And you know, but well, that's the way it would be here too. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. Would be. it would and, be. And and I even asked the DOT, and I got to be careful here, but I I said, you know, I go to these meetings, and the public is never in support of them, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, you guys must be really really sold on how they perform in order to keep. Push push, keep pushing it, you know what I mean? And But I have to say in Minnesota, you, if you're driving on 7 and all of a sudden you kind of forget that one's out there in the middle of the night, you know, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, but they, you don't hear too many negative, negative things about them. And the type of crashes is the thing that's very appealing to me. Everything's a side swipe, you know, you just sort of, it, you don't have people And there's a lot of truck traffic on, on, yeah. that, on that intersection. Yep. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, I just was wondering, just a sure. question. Okay. Uh, the other thing I have is uh, I'd like a motion to purchase the uh, yeah, we need two motions to stabilizer. stabilizer off of uh, the Yankton County bid. It's just a it's just a product that we put in the road. We've been injecting it through the mill, and it seems to be working pretty Move good. Move it. So. Second. Second. I have a motion by Kipley, second by Sutton, to purchase road stabilizer off the Yankton County bid. All in favor? Time out. Should be fished back, Kipley. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You want a separate uh, motion for the bid on the... Yeah. I also would entertain a motion for the bid on the intersection project. Authorize advertising. Yeah. Move it. Second. Move by Sutton, second by Hanson to advertise for the intersection project. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Survive your election. Motion carries. No roundabout. <laughs> With wine. Those guys don't have to face the election. That's why they keep doing it. I don't like it either. <laughs> but the roundabout. Can I say those because they don't have to face the election. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they don't care. They don't care with the public. Oh, yeah. Passing policy is no problem. <laughs> for guys that don't have to get reelected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's all yeah. I got. Was you uh, had climate control, just and dust control. Was that because of 14 was closed, that section up on? Yeah, we split some with Aberdeen Township okay. on uh, on that. Um, 
the fairgrounds road that last mile there well that it's minimum for whatever yeah. goes out past race yep. research assistance. and actually i participated with them kind of ahead of the game because when we close the <laughs> when we close the railroad crossing there it's going to get even worse than than what it is right now on that road yeah i um, saw that as treatment today. yep we don't uh that's about the only application i get a lot of calls about that and just for the record, if we're not doing a construction project that pushed something somewhere, we didn't do something specifically that caused it, we generally don't, you know, do dust proof. And I know sometimes there's a misconception that that's a program that the county does, but, um, but yeah, we did there. And I'm trying to think, it seems like we got another spot we're going to have to do in the near future here when we're, I can't remember where it is without looking, but. Our program entails giving them the number where they can privately buy it. Right. Right. And the people at Richmond, we're, we're going to start working out there. We'll be hauling some gravel out there in the next couple of weeks to get ready to start uh, blottering their roads out there. And they've been really cooperative with us because they do quite a bit of that out there. And we said you can't do it. If, if, if you do it to your road, it's going to get pushed back a year because you got to give some time to get that crap out of there before you put the oil down. So they've been pretty good about it. Went for a drive on 14. That's turning out nice. Yeah. yeah. Went north. Yep, we, I, I wish we'd go a little quicker, but of course yesterday we got rained out, but I'm not going to complain. I'm, and uh, hopefully this week, it should, it's about two days each way per, per pass or whatever. So we'll come back, we'll take two days and two days up and two days back and we'll be done. So it should be nice. It came out, the, the base part I'm pretty happy with. So it looks pretty good. Then we're going to move down and pave down on 21 where we been sitting down there for about three years gravel where we replaced the bridge and um, so just kind of keep hopping around so the first set of railroad tracks off of uh, coming into 14 really turned out nice and the second ones get any yep. attention this year yep. they, it'll get uh, it won't be to the extent of the you know it won't be it won't have concrete approaches and all that the crossing itself will get replaced like the south crossing the railroad part that didn't get replace we just fixed up to it on the north one the whole crossing is going to get taken out and replaced and then we'll sit down and, and we pave as part of the project we pay for our portion of that in kind by doing the asphalt work after the crossing is in so that's that's how we so pay the railroad for system takes care of the actual tracks and stuff and you just you yep. do the follow-up to the tracks when it's done yep and that look since that line's owned by the state you go through the state railroad office and then they they get your project going for you like we did last year and then they stick it in the step so if you get on them dig up the, the the different bidding bid lettings for this summer it'll appear in there somewhere uh, as being right in the program and uh, I think the railroad comes and does the work or else they cause their their maintenance contractor to come and you know replace the crossing and then we sit down and do the signs and the paving and all that so it won't be quite as fancy as the other one but we'll be obviously much better and then I haven't got everything you know I guys haven't uh, okayed the budget for next year and I haven't quite got everything laid out in the five-year plan but my intent then is we're gonna have a project we're gonna pay Prairie Wood next year and then hopefully be able to tie all these little projects together with some asphalt I just gotta see if I can get the numbers to work out right but pave all this stuff in between so then we're we're set up and should be good to go for a while very good all right. Thank, Thank you. You, you bet. Have a nice day, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Next on the agenda, we have Aaron Wahlberg with yeah. Veterans yeah. Service Officer to discuss 2019 budget. I apologize. I do not. Morning, Aaron. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Aaron. Hey, guys. I'll have a great. How are you? Well, it's Tuesday, and I'm here. <laughs> well, things are great. Can't complain if I do. Nobody listens You're anyway. Here. Welcome to our world. But right? Can, but I don't have the copies. Me. Okay. <laughs> Any changes? So we got we got a little hold up. Uh, Max just said she doesn't have the budget books done yet. Okay. No. So. Do you want to proceed or? What do you guys want from me? Well, if you want to make your pitch, then we'll just. <laughs> We'll remember that you gave us your pitch and we need to reschedule and we have it in front of us or you can talk about any changes that are coming up well I mean there's no real major changes honestly <clears throat> the only thing you're probably going to look at and see that and maybe kind of question is I did increase our repairs and maintenance our copier and stuff you know it's getting older 
Um, we did have to replace our shredder, obviously, because stuff wears out. Um, and then travel and conference, we did a little bit of an increase, too, because being on the executive committee, there's going to be some travel with that. And then we started a legislative um, group through the South Dakota Division of Veterans Affairs and the Veterans Council and then a rep from the Veterans Service Officer Association trying to get ahead of some of these legislative items and getting some legislation written ahead of time and maybe be a little more proactive with that so we're not getting caught like we did a couple of years you know, now. So there'll be a little bit more travel with that. But it's really, it's, it's less than a $1,000 increase from last year. You know, That's overall, like the year. Right? <laughs> and I've, I've been under budget every year I've been here. We noticed it. So that brings me to my next point. Okay. <laughs> like, what are we looking at for maybe a raise? You know, I've asked about it a couple times, and I understand that budgets are tight. But, you know, I pretty much make the same as my assistant. And all the responsibility of that office falls for me. If something goes wrong in there, it's me that's on the line. You know? And I think that... I think I work pretty diligently to try and do a very good job for the veterans in the county, and I think that's been reflected. Um, you know, that little office of mine with a $150,000 budget generates $16.5 million to Brown County. And I think... Uh, Maybe a raise would be something I'd like to talk about. I'm not asking for an exponential amount, but maybe something more commensurate with uh, the other department has to have a couple employees as well. Definitely take that into consideration when we're looking through the budget. You know, I mean, I understand that money is tight, but... Right? That's right. Huh? Now you, how is your part-time person doing that we added? Good. Is that good? It's very beneficial. Um, Tammy's definitely an asset, having a background, I mean, granted she's a veterinarian, you know, that's the business she runs, but she's very nice to have in there when it comes to some of those medical questions, because, you know, she understands that stuff, mm -hmm. and she does a very good job of getting all those old files that we wanted to get electronic. She does a very diligent and good job with that. She's good at catching some things that you, you know, you don't, you can't catch everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you sit there and read through Army medical documents all day, you're probably going to go bang your head on the wall for a while. But she does a good job, and she helps catch a lot of us. So, so it's, it's definitely beneficial. And it frees us up to keep working on all the, the new claims that are coming in, which is pretty high volume again. Yep. Well, I appreciate you keeping your budget steady. And I guess we'll take uh, under advisement for a raise. I guess that will be a commission decision. And right. See if we can have if there's a few pennies left over somewhere to help you out. <laughs> well, that would be great. You know, like I said, the, the big thing for me is <coughs> Kathy's an asset. She's worth every penny, you know, of, of getting her made a chief deputy a few years ago. Um, but again, though, you know, all the all the burden and everything of that office falls to me. And the book stops there. It, but yeah, so just something I'd like you guys to consider, maybe. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, and if you get a chance to look over it, you have questions, if you want to let me know, I'll yeah, we'll have you back. Okay. come back up and go over it. Sounds okay. good. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Sarah. Sarah. Morning. 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 Just Tom Schmidt, who's the guy who's rolling budget. Yeah, we'll get my buddy Mark next week. Do it. Running off limited fleet action. Uh, I'm on to the next week. I'm serious. Oh, we'll let it go. Gentlemen? Yeah. Still going? 40. Still going. 49. What's that? What's going on? $200. How are you? Good. 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 Morning, Mark and Tom. Morning. You guys uh, a little tired, I understand. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Part of yeah, part of yeah it is. Yep. <laughs> so if I make stuff that, that, you know? yeah. <laughs> so if I say something that doesn't make sense to all of you, then it would fit a right in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so. <laughs> a new idea. <laughs> a new, a new idea of an all-nighter. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're kind of coming down to the final stretches of setting schedules and pay for the court security positions. The last thing that we have is on the 
part-time staff, you know, what we would classify them as far as for pay. And we kind of need some guidance from you guys because when we can then offer this to the part-time staff, we can tell them this is what we can offer. Uh, we worked with Gary a little bit, and he had a couple examples that were within the employee roster, um, possible amounts that we can pay. And one of his emails, <coughs> he had, for the unsworn, unarmed employee that would be part-time, he had a couple different um, classifications, and I guess uh, one was $14.56, which would be like a part-time home detention, and the other one was like a, a highway landfill employee category at 1541. Uh, I guess it would probably be our recommendation. It's like a dollar difference, but it may have be helpful to get people to take those shifts. I was going to say it might be easier <coughs> to hire one with a little, little bit more. So then on the one that's for the armed employee, um, and I probably haven't had a chance to talk to all of you since, but we have talked to claims associates. We talked to Chris. Um, what do we need to do to be able to use? these people in an armed status that are not deputies. Um, claims associate said, you know, if Brown County is paying them, they're an employee, we're having them do a certain amount of training, especially with the firearms and stuff, to make sure that on the state level they are certified with the firearm. Um, <coughs> they thought that was a great idea, so he said, you know, as far as they're concerned, we can go ahead and use them and the coverage is still there. I mean, there's no loss of coverage just because they're not certified, but yet they are armed. So, and then on the one uh, that Gary had sent me, it, it may be a new category uh, for a, a part-time armed employee at $17.41. And I don't know what you base that off of, but you know, 17 and a half bucks or that close, you know, that's a pretty fair wage considering that you're inside and you know, that's going to be your duty station. I think we could certainly start with that and see how we do with that. Well, it took you quite a while to get even get the security we have out here to hire. And that was with Mark transferring two already established Brown County employees uh -huh. to go to that. You know, so I, so we're really open to anything. So they all going to be armed, or just no? Armed? Two out of the three. Two out of the three. Yep. Yeah. So there's going to be a difference between the armed ones and the non-armed. And there certainly should be, I think. And yeah, they have to have the extra training. <coughs> and it's the responsibility. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the one yeah. 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 how many are actually at the station? The other one's probably more risk. Time three. opens till time closes. Is there three? three? Yeah. We try to keep it at three. If it's a slow part, then they'll go around and do security checks around the building. And walk the courts and keep so you have them. And also outside. give breaks. And, and what we've done. they got to have um, breaks and lunch. The, ju the judges have asked for it to be open by a certain time, 7.30. So we'll have an armed deputy that will come. He'll activate all his machinery. He'll do the sweep of all the doors, make sure that they're unlocked, make sure there's no suspicious packages. Well, then by 8 o'clock, he's then joined with the second employee for when, or 10 to, when the people start coming in. So we'll have two people actually screening at the station by 8 o'clock. And then after eight hours, the first deputy, so that we don't incur overtime, will go home. And the second deputy will then come in like at nine o'clock and work to the end of the day. So that it's always a composition of either two or three at that station. So And that way at the end they can close <coughs> everything up, make sure everything's locked and there's nothing right. in there and set up there now. Every, we're ready to, yeah, we've been operational for about three weeks now. Have you? So when you're looking at hiring, are we looking at hiring how many are not certified versus non-armed? See, I think as a part-time, it's almost going to be like our transport driver. Like say this coming month, Craig Nelson has several vacation requests. So then I would go down my list of people who we use for transport operators that have certified with their firearm with us and see, can you take this shift? Can you take half a shift? You know, can two of you... Um, help out and between the two of you take a day. So it'll never be like just I'm going to hire Tom as a part-time employee. It's going to be as at will when we need him. It might be a month that no one ever takes any leave and we're just running on all the pilot. But if we do need him, at least then we can fill in. Uh, you know, we probably have at least a dozen current employees who would be willing to be trained and work on the non-certified, non-armed station if we need to fill in. 
but again that would be overtime. So we're going to try and fill as many slots as we can as part-time. Right. Without incurring the overtime. Yeah. That so we've been working so far. Very well. That's it. Yeah. We worked in conjunction with Minnehaha um, as far as some of the signage. We took tours of the downtown federal building as well as where the federal courthouse is to get an idea of how it should be signed when people come in, what's expected of them, what's you know not allowed. Um, GIS was a great help. They made the signs, laminated them and stuff. So um, we tried to keep <coughs> as much as we could here just under our control for costs. The probation has helped us out too because that's a lot of clients that come in to get checked out. They have to report daily. Who helped you out? Probation oh, office. Oh, okay. And then that way they tell them to just don't bring anything in. So most people are getting acclimated to They're it. They're told ahead of time. Yeah, they don't bring. They yeah. just walk through and they're done. So it's fully operational, but <coughs> you all knew there'd be that cost. And oh, yeah. There's nothing that you guys can dance around that. So. Right. Do you recommend the 1541 and 1741? Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Those, yeah. Gary's had the suggestion, <coughs> and we think that's a fair amount, and I guess it's a place to start. I agree. Yeah. Do we need a motion on that? I would make a motion to approve uh, advertising for help for uh, 1541 and 1741 for part-time and then the armed assistance. Motion by Sutton, second by Fishback to approve advertising for part-time at 1541 non-armed and 1741 for armed but not certified. And then part-time 20 and under? Yeah, traditionally, yeah. Okay. And how many um, folks do you have for driving? How many? Oh, we probably got a dozen. On our newest list, oh, I think we've probably they got. Go, they go Tuesdays and Fridays, okay. so they, they just take a trip down to Mitchell. 18 on the list I have. 18? 18 okay. for transport? Okay. Did you go There's a lot of them that yeah. do that. You take oh. turns. And you buy a few that don't. Yeah. 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 You have to use them for a long time. No, right. And if they're on the list. Is that 17 more or less or the same as when you drive? Huh? We update this every January. Some of the people on the list of drivers are the same people that will be on the list of this. Not all of those are armed or can be armed for the drivers. Sometimes if we need females going to Yankton. Hunter? Yeah, like just just a few months but ago. your your drivers yeah, that are not certified okay. are armed. How much do they get paid? I don't know. Then it's per trip. Okay. If it's to um, Mitchell, it's it's in a certain radius. It's like a hundred dollars per trip. If they go further, like to Yankton, then it's a hundred and twenty five per trip. So it's not by the hour. No. Nope. By the mile. And Gary, do we need to on the armed? And I know you guys are still discussing this, but do we need to have a new? classification as an armed part-time, you had made that possibility in your email? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. <coughs> we have a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll they, start also with that. they also wanted to discuss the possibility of a new budget code for court security. Correct? Yeah, we thought we'd have that separate so we could see what that was. For I think that's a good I idea so to too. track our costs. I, I've already checked with legislative audits and we have a code. Um, at, for the financial report and the final numbers, it would all be added into the sheriff. But 211 is sheriff, 212 is jail, 213 is coroner. 215 is JDC, so we could use 214, but we can't use 214 on the financial report because the definition is different. Okay, so let's separate it so we can we, we so separate have right the county. county. That's yeah, everything you, you folks do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we've got an accounting, we can track it yeah. and show what track the security what is cost. actually costing yeah. them. Right? Yeah. And particularly, too, you know, like right now, through the graces of other agencies, we were given the walk-through metal detector as well as the x-ray machine. So you know that. I mean, that's... Yeah. They're um, on loan to it. When the, the megatometer was, well, we won't say who, but... And then the x-ray machine, like Tom said, was something that in the future we might have to look at budgeting for if it comes back to, well, we need it back because we got to return it by this time. But I think it'll last for quite a while. Yeah. And we've talked to some of the federal assets, and the walk-through metal detector would be like a $5,000 deal. And that's just a common purchase that you can get through a number of different vendors. Um, the x-ray machine, of course, is a little bit more substantial. And more and more agencies are now going with a couple different companies that 
will lease them, much like a copier, much like so that you have a brand new machine. But it's like five grand a year, you know, just for the lease. But eventually, if these people ask for their equipment back, you know, we need to be able to plan and to say how can we budget for that and where does it come from. So. Yeah. Understandable. So that's in the bushes out there. But that'd be great. So then when we do our budget now that we're working on, where should we be putting those costs for the court security? Okay, we can give you another sheet for oh. 214. Okay, perfect. We'll get that Sounds good. Yep. All right. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mark. Congratulations, Mark. See you later. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, going. Well, we have uh, just a few more things at the last of our agenda, but we have a few more things. Uh, Max, you want to finish your list out? Lease agreements, roller girls, and North Plains. Yeah. Well, second. Uh, moved by Sutton, second by Kipley to approve the lease agreement, roller girls. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. There's a lottery permit for Stratford Community Theater. Move it. Second. Moved by Hanson, second by Sutton, to remove the lottery permit for Stratford Community Theater. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The NACO credentials um, need signed for Geary. I move that Doug signed the credentials. Second. Moved by Hanson, second by Sutton, to authorize chair to sign the NACO credentials for Gary Vetter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, a couple of weeks ago, there was a resolution um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. 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 for relief recipients. Yeah, exactly. And, um, That's a good idea. Um, you agreed to accept $150. I'll move that. Um, okay. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Hanson to <coughs> release the lien for resolution 27-18. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, that's all I have. Gary. Thank you that <coughs> newsletter from NECOG. Just wanted to highlight that um, Dirk was talking about the STIP meeting. The DOT STIP meeting will be Tuesday night, July 10th at 7 p.m. at American. Say it again. Tuesday, down. July 10th, 7 p.m. at the American. Thank you. For those of you that want to attend. Anything else, Gary? No, I think. Uh, I uh, think the other thing that you had mentioned that. was is Lake Region are uh, yeah coming up in July. Uh, do we have what are we doing for a speaker? Are we going to go with Pizza Ranch? Where are we you looking at? Hold it. Yeah. All those good things. I think uh, <laughs> we're getting a little big for Pizza Ranch, but it can still be done. But it'd be a little tight, so you just need to. We need to figure out a date and where or what you'd like to shoot for. And you think we should stay with them then, or totally up to you? Because we may end up having to go into that other room, which which so then you're using two separate rooms. Yeah, well, you're yeah. separating your people. Gary, what is when's your nickel? It'd be July twelfth uh, through the. 16. What about uh, July 19 for the Lake Region meeting? That sounds like a good date. What about then you can report on your village? village? That's a Thursday. You yeah. know, Centennial well, could Village? Be, could be awful day hot for Centennial Village. Yeah, and then also if it's raining, you're going to have just the, I don't know if there's enough room in that bar area to... I mentioned to him there is the possibility of across the street to the upstairs. They said they could At do the a claim? couple the choices. 15. But yeah, and 15. that's plenty. I've been to meetings and up And we'd there. have to collect the money, they said. Yeah, but we usually do. That'd be an option. I think that'd be fine. I'd, I'd, I'd be air-conditioned. Uh, I'll before. check with them to see if that date's available and let you know. So we've we've meeting. had meetings there before. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. 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 We have yeah. ex those extensions. What are we doing for a really discussion yeah. of is uh, you normally have some kind of a speaker or Tell yeah, we can, or what's the deal? now that we have dates and stuff, I <laughs> we can work out the speaker <laughs> okay. thing. I'm not too concerned about that aspect. Of it. Okay, July 19th. Unless you have someone okay. specific you want to see. Is it noon to two? Or is it 11? Like Howdy Show. What time you want to start? Shall yeah, like noon to <laughs> Usually, yeah. noon show, whenever <laughs> it's in. I'll go for that one. 11.30 to uh, yeah, 11 whatever. 30 to um, whatever. 
for you know 11:30 for registration eat at noon or something for michael somebody else <laughs> and we'd probably have to if we end up there we'd probably have to ask for rsvp of which dinner they wanted to choose if we wanted to save some time between yes that them. would they'll be offer nice. two offerings they said either steak and pork chop or steak and chicken probably whichever one people want probably the steak and chicken most women seem to like chicken over works for me yeah okay sounds good okay we have established that you'll we'll take care of the rest of the yeah okay anything else to come before the commission did we vote on the authorized signature on the cold milling project in oh Care? no i'm sorry Stephen, i i'm the only one i didn't authorize dirt yeah, yeah i mean i would vote that Okay. okay. Authorized signature on the notice of the coal B BC 23 coal milling project. We have a motion mm -hmm. by. Yep, right here. And I seconded it. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I guess. I'll, I'll Do we ahead. need a brief exact yeah, contract gonna, legal? I was mm -hmm. going to make that so I'll second your motion. Uh, i pending litigation. Prefaced by a two-minute break. Okay. We have a motion by Kepley, a second by Sutton to go into exec. <coughs> Aye. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. We are in exec. Max, come on in. We're out of exec and no action as a result. Chris, yeah, just Chris. No, thank you. I already got one. Will Jean get sworn in today, or how do you do that? Was what date did you catch that? Uh, uh, yep. That's come through HR now. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess I wasn't aware of that, but... Uh, it's part of the, the, the sign-up package. He just has to fill out his, his Old form. Friend. Yeah. Yeah. But does it have to go through the agenda then, too, or...? No. He okay. just takes his oath of office, and I'm not sure about his bond. Okay. Uh, if we're, we're, just, working if we're working on that. Okay. Yeah. So he does that today, though. Well, just so he's got the oath before the first day that. His official oh, okay. start date doesn't tell. Yeah. Right. Until yeah. Okay. Which yeah. is. Well, um, and uh, next week is ending. Uh, yeah. So next Tuesday we could give them the oath right here. Right. You could. That, yeah, that's why I'm doing that. That'd be okay. good. That way it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Thank you, Brain Tree. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Well, right. I was going to ask, anything else to come for the Brown County Commission? <laughs> I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Right here. Second, yeah, please. Sutton, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.